What's up guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to improve your post snap reads in Madden 18. First off, I want to welcome you to the new those of you that are new to my channel. My name is Cody and uh, this channel is all about trying to help you get better in Madden 18. For those of you guys that are longtime members and watched yesterday's video, I wanted to apologize to you guys as I did not realize my game volume was put all the way up and ended up messing with the audio. So I'm going to redo that video and do a couple more videos for you guys today on the subject. So post snap reads is what I want to talk about. And uh, we're just going to use, I'm in the New York Giants playbook. This is the new offense that the people in the premium membership just got access to. Uh, they should have access to it by this afternoon, if not before then. So be sure you're on the lookout for that. Defensively, we're just going to run some standard things. But I want to talk about my process. So obviously you have your pre-snap read hypothesis. We've talked a lot about that. The videos, you could look those up on the channel. You know, not really concerned. If you're watching this video, it's really because you want to figure out how do I dissect the defense and throw it to the right receiver post-snap. And I'm going to say a couple of things that you could control. Here's, here, here's the first thing that comes to mind whenever I talk about this with people. And that is when you come out in the same formation every play, it makes it easier to read the defense because there's only so many ways the defense can respond to this specific formation. For example, if they um, if they do something like this, where they bring Kendricks out here, they bring Walker out here, and maybe they put them in man assignments on um, on the receivers, right? Maybe they're going to do that. That's going to and then let's see, you're just trying to think off my head, what would be something else they could do to really jack with me? Well, they could go cloud flat here. Um, and then they could go like this because they know that I normally run the tight end on a streak. And then they could take Mills and they could kind of user control him. So they would maybe bring him here, you know, and then what they would do over here, they got the guy manned up and then they would just play cover two, right? On that side of the field. So they go cloud flat, and that pretty much would shut down everything I want to do, in essence, okay? Um, and what they're going to really do with this guy is use him on Des Bryant. If they do something like that, if that's what you see pre-snap, then you can just quick audible down, inside zone, and you can kill most of them as they just destroyed me there. Wow. But normally you can run inside zone if they do something like that. The uh, Giants playbook has the inside zone capability. Another thing you could do, and again, they're not going to have time to do most of that stuff, but this is just hypothetical. And if they're moving, manually moving people all over the field to try to throw you off. So, for example, another thing that they might do is they might take this corner and bring him like, like he's going to blitz off the edge. Right? They might do something like this. So then our response is to throw a smart routed out route, right? Because it's an outbreaking pattern and he's going to get to the outside and normally he's going to do pretty well. Now, if they ran, let's say they did that, but they did it out of cover two. Okay, just kind of hypothetical scenarios here. And when they, when you see something like that pre-snap, what that can mean is it can give you some information for the post-snap, but more than likely you're going to be able to catch it in your pre-snap read because you're out in the same formation every time. As you can see there, they get it. I could have waited a little longer and probably fit that in. But anyway, so what I really want to focus in on is post snap and how to read the safety. So what a lot of there's a lot of different methods. What I recommend doing is picking a point on the field that you're going to aim at with your eyes, and then you're going to use your peripheral vision to see the rest of the play. So it's a, it's almost like a fixation point, okay? Like if you're speed reading or something, you'd use a fixation point so that you don't have to bounce your head, move your eyes. So what you really want to do is, is break the field up into two sections, the left and the right. And normally, because you read left to right, I like to do my reads in a, in a uh, play left to right. And the only thing that I'm asking, another another reason I recommend running a simplified version of your playbook is because you don't have to like look to where Cole Beasley is going to know he's running a corner out. You just will run it, and after you run this enough times, you will feel it. You will know he's going to the corner if you're running Z spot. You will know he's going to the post if you're running PA post. All right, so... 
what I would do then is is so I'm going to I'm going to click on McLeod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at him, but because I'm looking at him, I'm going to be able to see everyone on the left side. I'm going to be able to see Mills, I'm going to be able to see Robinson, and I'm going to be able to see Kendricks. And normally I'll be also able to see uh, Walker. If they drop this guy into a third, so what, here's what's going to happen. One of probably four things. He's going to drop into a flat zone. Um, so how do you get him to go into a flat zone, actually? Or he's going to he's gonna drop down, like in a curl flat, right? And then he would come over top, um, like this. Okay, if they go cover three, see that right there? That's what's going to happen. If they go cover two, what's going to happen is both safeties are going to drop to the outside seams. So what I would see then is I would see him drop way out here. Okay, if I if they go cover four, then he's going to drop straight back. And then I'm going to guarantee you that probably these guys here are going to drop in a certain section. Okay, so anyways, then you're going to jump to the right side. So natural progression, you're going to come into, into Jenkins. So you're going to look at McCloyd, see what his initial movement is, if it's back. If it's left, if it's right, by looking at him, you're also going to be able to see Mills, Kendricks, and Robinson. Then you're going to jump to Jenkins. If Jenkins goes to the inside, if he goes down, if he goes to the outside, if he goes straight back, if he goes in man assignment, that's going to tell you what all these other guys are going to do. Okay, so essentially, you're you're using the safeties as as fixation points. So basically, I'm going to snap the ball. And I'm going to look to the left safety first. So focusing on him. Fixation point, okay. Know that's coming, so I can check down. Sometimes, in my opinion, I take... My biggest mistake is I take too long to make a decision. So I'll look at the safety, like, for 10 minutes. What I need to do is bounce my eyes. So look here, look there, and then make a decision up based on what, I've, what I just saw. You're... Your brain takes longer to process things than um, an instant. It takes a, a second, so it's a little bit delayed. So that's why, number one, you want to have a pre-snap hypothesis. But number two, you want to be able to use the fixation points um, and just check those fixation points and then don't try to continually focus on them. Jump now to how am I going to throw the ball? How am I going to throw the ball to my receivers to make a play? Okay, so that's, again... That is, it's a very delicate balance. You don't want to not look at them at all, but you want to look at them and then bounce it off to the next one. So here, um, I'm going to look, boom, boom, nothing. Okay, I'm going to check down. Um, there I saw Tampa too. Now, what happens if they do something kind of weird? So some guys, if in my opinion, probably smart guys, what they'll do is they'll take these safeties and they'll run cross man coverage. So they'll go here. Something like this, basically. Right? And then they'll take their middle linebacker because they know they can also cross-man him on the inside guy on the other side. And they're going to put this guy right here in a deep zone. If I can do that, I don't know how I... Uh, let me reset this. So here's what they're going to do. They're going to do something like this. Um, they're going to take McCloy, put him on here. Gonna take Jenkins, put him here, and then they're gonna take these middle linebackers, and they're gonna man because this guy's technically the middle linebacker, so they're gonna man him up on the the, the cross man tight end. And then you have the cloud flats that can take away the flats. You have a mid read in the middle. There is very good potential you'll see something like this. Okay, so here's what you do. So post snap read. So we're gonna run the same play. So we look, we see man-to-man. -man. We can check to this right here, and normally you'll get good results. But you see the safety's bouncing to man. That means that now it's it's now man, okay? And so then you would read the defense accordingly. Obviously, you're going to have to throw, you know, more than likely to someone that has outside leverage, but um, you would adapt. Let's see here what else we can do. So if they run cross man, again, this takes a crap ton of time to set up. But let's say they run cross man. You look, okay, they're in man-to-man. -man. Normally that, I don't know how he did that. I'll intercept that. Normally that drag works. 
but that's how you can kind of dissect. Again, um, what if they go, another thing that you'll see a lot of people do is they'll go Tampa 2, and, and but they'll back the coverage off to make it look like cover 4. This is actually a really good tactic. So for me, I would then want to run the play verticals, right? That's kind of my go-to play against cover 4 um, to hit the outside receiver. So in the case that this happens, oh, no, now they're in Tampa 2. You know, what's my what's my next step? And in this play, really the next step, if they would do that, if I'm running Tampa 2, really the next play or the next the, the check is your check down which would be Ezekiel. So I look safety, safety, nothing, nothing. Okay, check down. Okay, no, nothing, scramble. So, you know, I also had Jason Witten on the out. But, again, it's it's really, really tricky. Uh, Post-snap reads. I'm going to have more content coming out for you guys because I'm going to keep working on trying to figure out how do you really teach it. It's very, very tricky. What I would say is find two fixation points. So you're going to basically look at the safety on the left, the safety on the right. And you're going to figure out what is he doing? Is is he? And by looking at him, you're going to then see everybody else, and then you're going to make a decision. Honestly, this year, most people when they run zone coverage, you're going to be able to hit drag routes. That's kind of the most common. But when they blow coverages, and there are times that that happens because they're trying to stop the drag. So what people will do is they'll say, okay, well we're, we're in cover four, but we really are tired of of facing the drag route, right? We, we, we want to make him throw somewhere else. So what's going to happen is you're going to see something like this. The safety will bounce down. And you'll be able to hit the tight end over the seam. Okay, so again, you just have to kind of get more practice, get more training. It's very difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's something that takes quite a bit of time to really be good at. But there is hope. I would say you're going to get more content from me on this because I'm going to work harder to try to figure out how to teach this. And secondly, get use those fixation points. That's probably the biggest tip I could give you right now. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to apologize to you guys again for yesterday's video. And I want to just encourage you guys to take a look at that premium.